Hi, I'm Ross from Energy Matters. Welcome to our podcast, Road to Zero, where we dive headfirst into all things renewable. Join us as we chat with industry experts, tech specialists, and some of your favorite TV and radio personalities, asking the renewable energy questions that you want answers to. Our goal, a zero carbon future. This morning, I am absolutely delighted to be joining my good buddy, I'm Dave Franklin, who, uh, before I let him talk, you know, he's overseen many landscape and port projects in his career as an award-winning landscape architect and port designer. Um, include, he's also been in, on 12 seasons of The Block and is also a star presenter on Open Homes Australia, which is currently on TV. Dave, how are you, mate? I'm good, Ross. And yourself? I am very well, very well. Thank you for joining me this morning. No, no my pleasure. Mate, it's, it's it's interesting not not either see I'm not seeing you on set or on a golf course. So uh, yeah. it's good to see <laughs> Well, I think more on set than the golf course these days. That's for sure. So. I know, mate. We'll have to get back on there soon, mate, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Look, Dave, a few quick questions. I mean, obviously, you, you know, there's a, you know, we did a quick intro on you just now. Um, a lot of people know you know know you from the block. And just yep. since obviously you've met me just let us we know. We'll talk about that in a second. I mean, with your background, how did you get first get into landscape gardening? Yeah, look, I've, I've done it all my life. It was one of those things that, um, to be honest, I didn't like school and got out of school when I was, you know, 15. Thought I was going to be a professional skateboarder. Well, you know, broke my arm in the first week, so that was over. And, um, mate, I uh, was a bricklayer for a year and then got a job in landscape. And back then, landscaping wasn't big, you know. It was like you, landscaping, you used to do that with your dad, you know, and that was it. So... We probably wrote the grassroots when landscaping started and then realised the design aspect in it that was fantastic and what these hands can do, you can do a lot with. So and that's one of the things why I loved it. The job it is never the same every day. It's something different. So that's oh, the best thing about landscaping. Completely. It's almost like a blank canvas, isn't it? I mean, as you said, every house is different. Every bit of terrain is different. You know, yeah. you never quite know what you're going to get. I mean, how did you go from that to the block? I mean, like, how did you go from those landscape gardening day to day and then appearing on the block. Yeah. Oh, look, it's a long story, but I can make it quite quick. So, <laughs> yeah, I know what happened was that, you know, I've been doing it for a long time. And then, um, you know, back in the day, you know, we started winning awards. I won the Australian Landscape of the Year in the year 2000. That's showing wow. my age. Okay. So, but I didn't win it once. We won it sort of, you know, I think it was like four or five times in a row. So, we actually had Don Burke back then do a story on, on myself. And um, I had a business partner then at that stage, John. And uh, anyway, TV sort of happened for us a little bit and then it stopped and then next thing you know I got a knock on the door from a show called Selling Houses Australia and then uh, went from Selling Houses Australia we did I think one episode there and then I got a phone call mate come to the block I went to the block I never left so wow. <laughs> that was that. so so yeah I've been yeah this is my 13th season that we're doing right now no way and you, you almost have become part and parcel of the show i mean i know like my, my wife and i we've been watching the block i think since season two and, yeah. uh, and we absolutely love it and when you look at the block i mean obviously you've got scotty cam you've got keith and you've got dave franklin i mean that's kind yeah. of like three people you're expecting to see every single week week in week out yeah. and, 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 and it's a lot of fun i mean when, when, it, when it comes to that sort of media stuff i mean what do you love most about it i mean what you know, well, the blocks the blocks are different beasts altogether. I mean, look, we're normally and you've seen us on shows before, Ross. So I mean it's normally when you are doing like open homes Australia, which is again a lovely good show and stuff like that. But you get the chance to sort of go, okay, well look, it's raining, stop the camera and you know, we've got to go elsewhere. It's, and we'll we'll film tomorrow. With the block, you don't have that opportunity. They're the days you have to do it, rain, hail, or shine. So what you've got to do is there's an anxiety that comes in with that show as well. Okay. It's like you know, people think you've got seven days. It's not seven days. You've got six days because the judges come in at nine o'clock on the Sunday and everyone goes, oh, you must get extra time. Mate, the only time I've been given is an extra hour and a half out of all the seasons I've ever done. So the art of the, how it goes is that you basically, you're doing this and then if you haven't got a lot of stuff in line by, say, Friday, you've got to start pulling stuff out of the job to make sure you can get some sort of result. So... What it brings me in that show, it brings me a lot of anxiety, but a lot of enjoyment when I'm watching it because I go, God, that was the worst day of my life. But the best day is watching it because you don't have to do it again <laughs> until oh. next season. So um, it's a it's a pressure cooker. And as I call uh, Julie, Julie and Chris, who's our executive producer up there, I call him a puppet master. And he's just, he knows I love stress. <laughs> so he just goes, oh, Dave, guess what? We're doing this one. So 
mate, I'm going up there today and you just don't know what's thrown at you. So that's the block. So I love it. And it, it, it sounds like it has been a little bit of a, I mean, all, all I know about what's happening this season is what I've read about in the media. And I know obviously there's a few dramas initially just with like, you know, getting it started. And um, I think that's probably counts more than like. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we couldn't get permits. I think we're, well, look, gen generally speaking, we're, I think we're eight weeks behind, um, which is a long time. Okay. So just to give us, a bit of an idea of what, how bad it is for us. It's not bad because the show's still going to go on in August, okay? But uh, for us at this stage is that we're up in – we're in farms, okay? So what we've got – we're at the bottom of Mount Gisborne. We've got rain season coming up. So this is terrible. So the whole show is going to be through rain. So this is going to be probably one of the hardest slogs that you're going to get, than you're going to see. So this year you're going to see – a lot of crying, I reckon, and a lot of people giving up and a lot of mud. So, Mate, especially as it's rural as well, it's going to be a ton of mud. I, Mate, if, as soon as we leave here, it's at least five degrees lower, and that's uh, no joke. So so beanies, gloves, um, I'll still wear shorts, but this will give it a yeah, case. You're always, you're always wearing shorts. If anyone who's, who's not living in Melbourne, it was nine degrees first thing this morning. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, that's it. <laughs> Welcome to Melbourne's winter. Um, oh, Dave, right. Just really on Franklin Landscape and Designs again, very quickly. I mean, what three things would you say? I mean, you obviously create that business from scratch. You you know create an amazing business. I mean, people know you all around the country. i um, not just because of your media stuff, but also because of that particular business. I mean, what three things would you say differentiates um, you know Franklin Landscape and Designs versus your competition? Yeah, look, definitely I think uh, design's everything, okay? So one thing that we offer that uh, – there's a lot of companies that do offer this as well, but I suppose one thing that I focus on is that I love something different. I push for it, and sometimes you, even if you're not making as much money out of it, but to get that right result, to have that on the website, to advertise, to get that up there, that's what we sort of did a little bit. Sometimes you've got to lose a little bit to push a great job, and that brings in a lot more jobs, you know, but – we do design, we start with that. So once we've all, we've got the design in, we've already got our foot in the door, okay, with the client. So the, once you've got that relationship with the client, we do the construction. That's the second thing, you know, and then we do the pool as well. So we've got the three businesses as well. So that's the difference. We're a one-stop shop. So you can still have, you know, come to us and deal with, you know, you're going to deal with different people in the three different companies, but you're still dealing with the Franklin brand as well. And that's what is a real big difference with us and everywhere else and, you um, yeah, you know, we pride ourselves on you know giving the, the best result as well. Um, you know, if we're not just a, a company where we just print it and stamp it, go get, get it out of there. Um, every product's different, every client's different, every job's different. So you've got to change your mind and go into each job and think right out, okay, how can we make this different? I don't want to do the same pattern of payment. I don't want to do this. And you really listen to the clients about what they want and then you know what, and I hate saying this, sometimes the clients, you know, it's never good going around and talking stuff on a Thursday night when they're having red wine because their ideas go up for here, so, but yeah. their budget's still there. So <laughs> rule of thumb, get them first thing in the morning and they're more factual and they know their bank balance more. So, but, and, that, and, that's, yeah. and that's what you just need to trust an expert as well. I mean, like I, I know for ourselves personally, my wife and I, I mean, you know, I've got design background, but I certainly have, have no idea, neither of us are green-fingered and we're, we're, we can't even look after a little plant for longer than two weeks before it dies, right? But I mean, coming up with something so beautiful that that's going to be with you for, for your life and going to grow and develop and evolve over a period of time as well. I mean, you'll have a loose idea of what you want, but that's when yeah. you've really got to trust the expert. So having that design yeah. aspect, and I, I think what you just hit, hit mark on, to be fair, is the fact you incorporate and encompass all three aspects and you're literally holding the customer's hands from beginning to end so they yeah. can actually start the journey with you, finish a journey with you. Yeah. And if anything needs to deviate and change within the journey, you know, it can do because they just know that, you know, you're kind of like making educated yeah. choices along the way. So, Well, well that's look, that's what pe people are time for these days. And to be honest, I think everyone's learned that let the professionals do it. Like if we get, you know, if we have to have meetings every morning because the clients come home at night time and said, oh, look, I think the pavers are 20 mil out or something like that. Well, let us make that decision, you know. <laughs> so that's what yeah. we're there for. But... Yeah, you know, as we say, is that you know the other thing that, that we do have is a great team. It's not just myself that just does the designs here. It's I've got a fantastic team here that does the design. So I basically come in and have a look at everything and go, look, I think maybe move that there, move that there. So it's a team effort. It's not just me. It's a, it's the Franklin team, and it's the same with that. And you know, the other thing is you provide a good workplace for everyone. You listen to their ideas and that, and that's when you can't get stuff out of them. And, 
as we say, out of this thing here, out of our office here, so we're, we're really selling black mythical magic out of the door. So okay. that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to sell the best black mythical magic that's going around, and that's in the design. So, yeah. you know, everyone has, like, you've heard of writer's block and you've heard of this, but there might be a thing where I can't get my head through it, and then I might go to, you know, Dan, Gordon or Hugh or Samira and say, well, listen, hang on a second, guys, what can we do there? And they'll grab it and then they'll design it and do that right thing. So... Having that team environment, looking over all the plans, that's a different different thing that a lot of people don't have in their other companies. And you've got to let the people show their talents, and that's what the difference is with us. And that's why I think that we come up with something that's amazing all the time, um, because we overlook it. We overlook our designs, and when and I look at it as if like what I can actually, you know, live in as well. And you know, as I said, I've just recently finished my place, which I've been to, and. You know, yeah. I live in that backyard and I think, you know, I make sure that everything I design, you're going to use, you know, let's not do a fad. So, and that's, yeah, again, coming back to it, that's our strongest thing is sitting in the design and, and going from there. Mate, I love it. And look, one, one thing, I mean, we're, we've clicked, obviously we've enjoyed working together and we've worked on a couple of different sort of projects and um, film shoots yep. together in terms of TV stuff. But I guess what I loved about, you know, really catching up with you as well as your you know, how committed you are towards sustainability, making a difference. I think obviously being outside every day, you know, helps yeah. helps with that journey, right? So you're surrounded by the environment. Um, and you know, the most recent thing we're working on at the moment is open home. So before we um, talk about open homes, if we couldn't just show the audience, anyone who's watching this today, not listening to it, um, here's a quick preview from this Saturday's episode. Um, this Saturday, we're going to be heading to Pottsville um, to chat with Nathan and his company, SAE Group. And he's got a stunning home. The very first shot is... Um, as Dave and the house on it, so watch this place. On this episode of Open Homes, coastal living in Pottsville, some innovative building in Brisbane, an absolute gem on the Mornington Peninsula. We see what's behind this striking facade, a family home with style. And to finish, prefab living, but not as you know it. Just wait till you see this. After everything was cleaned up, that's when Ray approached us to do two things, basically. One, a house for Ray, and two, a house or sanctuary for the Joeys. Come with us as we step inside. There you go, mate. You had the very first shot of the, uh, of the preview. How awesome was that house? Oh, like, I was going to say, Rosh, so we were doing another show that day as well. And, um, yeah. You said come down and, and have a look at this. And I'd have to say that was probably one of the best days filming that we've had there because, one, the client was amazing. Um, he gave us cocktails at 12 o'clock. So I was thought, <laughs> right, you know, we called it the Pottsville Hammer, remember? So that's but, right. Yeah. <laughs> Again, listen to his passion about, you know, like, you know, the, I think the best thing was is that my son's always wanted a Tesla. And, you know, he had a brand new Tesla sitting in the garage and then I've never been in one and just seen how fast that car is. It's, you know, the whole house is full of batteries and solar. So, you know, I learned a lot that day, put it that way. Look, it was, it was absolutely incredible. I mean, what, what was, you know, great about it was it was the perfect example of how you can almost, you can take a very large home, beachside property, stunning, but then almost be, you know, it literally is off grid. I mean, and then he had his man cave, which is where his bar was, which was fantastic. They had some power panels on the roof. Um, he had a, obviously a Tesla Powerwall 2, the EV. So really what Nathan's created was outstanding, but you loved the pool as well, didn't you? Oh, look, the pool, well, as I said, we, we're actually working on a pool show. So we're like, well, hang on, are we here to do the pool show? We're like, no, we're doing Open Homes Australia. And I said, well, I think we got it around the wrong way. But, um, yeah. you know, we did say we'd love to go back and uh, have a crack at it. I mean, they were a lovely family. You know, Pottsville, what a beautiful spot as well at the same time. And, you know, as we're saying, learning, learning about what he's actually doing with all the electricity and, you know, as you said, with the Tesla cars and that, that he's got the contract to do all the power charging on the side of the highways as well. Well, you know, good on him. And he was the quintessential great Australian bloke. You know, at the end of the day, Dave, do you want a beer? Do you want to go for a surf? You know, I mean, that's the sort of things I love. So, yeah. He, he, Nathan's an absolute legend and he's a credit to the industry as well. I mean, he's an absolute yeah. thought leader and he's... You know, can't wait for everyone to watch the episode on Saturday. Walk around his home, SAE Group, um, is his business in North and South Wales. This sets mm. about four thirty PM. So, Dave, yep. with, with the pool show, I mean, how's that going? Has that has that wrapped yet? Was that still- yeah? Look, we, no, we haven't wrapped yet. No, we, get, we did an episode actually yesterday, and then uh, we've got all Perth next week, and then uh, we've got a couple of fun shoots that's coming back up from the Gold Coast as well. So. But we're hoping to have that all wrapped up by the end of May, okay, so we can put that on TV. We want that on TV sort of mid-June to late June. And this is, yep. again, it's Australia's uh, first pool show. 
Um, you know, so we've got to hopefully, you know, people love it and we think they should. It's good for the consumer, good for everyone to have a look. There's some big pools, small pools, affordable pools, non-affordable pools. It's, we're showing everything. <laughs> I've got some great co-hosts as well, a lot better looking than me as well. So you are look, you um, to to Josh. Yeah, we've got Josh from Love Island and I worked with him on the block last year. Okay. Yeah. So but I've never seen so many women run to the guy like that. So <laughs> um, so it makes me look good at the same time. And then I've got a gorgeous uh, Jessie Roberts. Uh, she's done done a lot of TV, but you know what? She's uh she's amazing and I think she's got a real big future in it as well. But she's a natural and yeah, I think the three of us for the banter that we actually have as well. You've got to have a bit of fun when you're filming, and that's what we're doing. So, you know, again, we're proud to be the first Australian pool show ever, and it's just probably getting into the viewers' minds and saying, look, this is what you have to do with the pools. I mean, it's more about what you can afford and what you can't afford and what you're going to come across. So yeah, it's not just educational. It's a bit of fun and, yeah, a lot of swimming. Mate, I can't wait to watch it. It looks incredible. Um, Dave, just very quickly, just about the business before we move on to Zero Carbon Future. I mean, what, what challenges, I mean, every every industry we work with or we know about is having some sort of challenge right now. And from a renewable energy point of view, you know, we're just, we're being impacted by the availability of stock in the country, the cost of, you know, the logistics, the cost of transportation, you know, even manufacturing components from overseas, like China, for example, is becoming yeah. an issue. And causing delays in stock or shortages of actual product. I mean, what sort of challenges are you facing at the moment in your business? Look, to be honest, it's the close contact rule that's going today. So, um, yeah. you know, we've got a company of thirty people, um, and look, at the same time, you know, if you get one person that's close contact and then they don't have it, and then all of a sudden, in the week after, they actually have COVID. You know, we're out for two weeks, so. You know, I think what you're going to see a lot this year is that a lot of people are really hurting over that because of loss of um, volume of work. Um, again, the, the stocks as well, Rosh, is just huge. I mean, you know, you hit the nail on the head like a person that's got 15 cars running every day. The petrol costs are just huge, you know. So, yeah. you know, do we do, obviously powers, the electric cars have got to be a big thing. So I think we're looking forward to seeing what happens in that progress because all above the thing, I'm just getting bills smashed everywhere, you know. So... As for making money, well, look, you've really gone from a five-day week to, I think, a three-and-a-half day when you put all the COVID stuff in and the delays and that, and that's where we're sitting. It's okay. Um, yeah, it's been it's been tough for a lot of people out there. So we've had to navigate through everything, and look, hopefully that's the last of it today and we can move on and get, get moving with everything. No, fantastic. Well, I was, I was really chuffed to see, you know, you, um, you know, obviously connecting you with one of our partners to do solar power and batteries for your home. And I know that you're passionate. They've driven that, you know, been that Tesla. I can I can only imagine there'll be a, uh, an EV an EV outside of your home very soon. But oh. talk, talking about zero carbon future, I mean, what are your thoughts on climate change and what's going on right now? Look, look. to be honest, I mean, I haven't been actively doing a, a lot about it because I'm a person that goes to work and all that sort of stuff. But I think my, you know, listen to my 18-year-old daughter about it and stuff like that. They're very into it, you know. I think definitely we've all got to change. And, you know, again, as I just said before, I mean, I, I stare down the barrel at an average of $5,000 a month on just petrol fuel uh, fees, you know. So if yeah. I had electric cars, you know, I'm saving $5,000, you know, a month, if not more, you know. So so I think, you know, putting this in position now, I think we would be ignorant not to start thinking of carbon zero future, you know. And I think that it's got to be something for our kids to sort of bring through, you know. So, um, but yeah. yes, you know, looking at where we are at the moment, we've definitely got to do something. And I know that, you know, we had a quick chat about it earlier. I don't know how much you can mention or just in a quick, but, you know, in what, in what you're doing in Gisborne on this, on the block project, yeah. I mean, taking sustainability and you yeah. know, carbon reduction to another level. Can you just quickly oh, share? This is, this is ridiculous. So, I mean, look, one, one thing about this, uh, the show there, and Julian Cress is the, uh, Oh, you know, he's the big executive producer with Justin Sturzacker. And uh, look, those guys are fantastic. There's got to be a sustainability thing that they've all taught us. And this has been from day one in the block, okay? And they say this. When we come into the area, we don't come in, we don't want to wreck your area, okay? We want to give something beautiful and, you know, maybe raise the house prices for everyone, make it like destination. So what we've done this year is that we're off grid. We're building a little wind farm as well at the yep. same time. And we have these mobile solar panels and they're massive. They're the size of a truck. And we move them around to where the sun is during the day on, on the truck. I always fork them up and stuff like that. So that powers the whole site, okay? Wow. And not only, not only that, that we've been doing there as well is that 
we've taken all the soil, so we had to build all these hall roads and stuff like that. So what we've done is that instead of getting rid of all the soil, bringing the other stuff in, we've got a soil screener on site. So we screen all the soil and it spits it out beautiful soil. It takes rid of the rock, gives it good soil. So everything there, even the rocks being dug out from the foundations of the house, we're using the same rocks there to do all the walls and stuff like that. So nothing has actually left the site. So as for sustainability on, on the show, you don't get any more sustainable than this. So it's, again, we're trying to be leaders in that show in showing that you can use solar, you can use these things. There are these ways of helping climate control and stuff like that. So there's a massive push on that one in the block as well and, you know, proud to be part of it. Mate, that's absolutely amazing. I mean, we love the show anyway, but I can't wait. I'm so inspired to watch it. And I think what yeah. Julian and the team have done with that, including yourselves and, you know, the cast and crew, it, you know, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's a it's a brilliant show, but it does demonstrate what's possible. And um, and I think we're just, you know, you know, all, all we ever want to do at Energy Matters and inside these podcasts is just open open people's eyes to the small changes, the small differences anyone can make. And um, if everyone did even one small thing, I mean, the cumulative effect is huge, you know, absolutely massive. And that's pretty much what we need to do. Mate, look, thank you so much for being on to the world today, Dave. I know you're a busy man. I know you've got some filming. You've got to get out to Gisborne again. I, I know. I've got, a, I've got one after this and got to go to the block. So there you go. <laughs> but, uh, mate, I'll see you on the golf course there next time, Ross, because I'm pretty sure I beat you last time, mate. So. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to put it in. <laughs> as good as each other. Um, but no, mate, very, very good to have you on the, on the show, mate. Thank you very much, and I will catch up soon. No problem. See you later. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys, before we finish up, um, just remembering that, um, that, first of all, thank you for watching today. Um, Open Homes Australia will be on this Saturday at 4.30 p.m. You can catch it live on Nine Life. And if you miss it, that's okay. Just jump onto the Nine Now Catch Up TV network from the Nine, uh, Nine's digital channel, and you'll be able to catch up on all the episodes so far, as well as uh, see Dave's upcoming um, show, with the, um, the full show, as well as the block later on at Nine um, in, in the next few months' time. Uh, before we uh, finish, just remember you can get three free solar quotes and a free energy bill comparison via our website at energymatters.com.au. And look, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please feel free to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn to catch up on the la latest renewable energy news. Uh, for now, have a fantastic uh, weekend. Enjoy open homes, um, open homes on Saturday and see you guys next week.